Hello and welcome back to Making with Z. Uh, in this video I was going to go over the DROs that I added to the lathe. Uh, the one you're looking at here is the Sino DRO, specifically for lathes and grinders, I guess. And the other one, actually I made, and we'll go over how I did that, uh, for the tailstock. So the first thing I did, or accessory that I added on to the lathe, was the uh, two-axis DRO up here. Using the dials was okay for a while. Um, and like many of you that are running lathes like this, uh, it works. I mean, it's it's a little tough, but it's doable. Um, both axes, you know, you can see here, you got backlash to deal with, things like that. So what I did at first was I did also make uh, things to go on to here with indicators uh, to see where I'm at and up here also um, and that worked for a while but I really wanted a DRO and you know the one I settled on was the Sino SD S2L uh, I purchased this from CDCO tools and I'll give you the link at the end of the video show you what I paid for it and uh, what they show on their website so the DRO does come with two scales uh, one for the cross slide here uh, which you have a choice really where you want to mount it some people mount it on this side like I did some people mount it on the other side over here um, I thought about that but over here is where everything happens you're pushing oil on here and all your chips so I really didn't want to put it on there um, so I decided you know to put it out on this side now one of the only disadvantages uh, was that I have oil holes here that I can oil everything. The two holes for uh, oiling here uh, are covered up by this. So what I'm doing now, and i got to figure out a better way to do this maybe, is I'm just taking off the seals, the wipers, off both sides and just manually coming in here and oiling it. Um, so I would like to make something like it was before because this is pretty convenient with these little... Um, knobs or balls you just come there with an oiler and push oil in there so in this case I'm not able to do it on the z-axis here I don't know how well you can see it it's kind of hard for me to get in there um, you can see the scale here and everything it did the kit was really well um, you know you had all the parts that you need so all the brackets that I needed were there and it was really easy you do have to drill and tap your lathe uh, to install it but the install is fairly simple. Here's a view of the back of the readout. Um, what you have here is just two serial port-like connections for each axis, the power switch, the power adapter, and a separate ground mounting screw that I haven't used yet, but I, I probably will. And CDCO has their info here, which I'll also show you at the end of the video. Okay, here's a top view of the z-axis scale you can kind of see the whole scale there mounted on the back side of the lathe now the scale mounts and then it does have a cover uh, to keep anything coolant whatever you know from splashing on it these are glass scales um, so if you did get them dirty or whatever it would cause some problems but i've had them for quite a while uh, i think i got it a year after i bought the lathe and it's been so you know many years since i've had it and i've never had any issues now you guys are probably thinking, if I've had it for so many years and it works great, how come it's so clean? Uh, no, there's no dirt on any of the buttons. The reason for that, I'll show you, is it came with this nice cover. And I usually just keep that on. I think it's meant to be maybe just, I don't know, cover or the way I'm using it. And by using that all the time, I can see everything really well. But, you know, obviously when you take it off, it's like brand new under there. The cables from each of the axes, all I did was just, um, you know, put these little wire management, cable management pieces on their plastic grips and just went across and to the back. So as I move the carriage, they just kind of drag along. And they always stay out of the way. I've never had issues with them uh, causing any problems. So on the display here, you've got some features that you can really use. 
The only one annoying thing, and it's not that bad, it's got one, two, three, four, five, zero, five decimal places. It does make it a little more confusing. I wish it only had four, and I've looked in the manual. There's really no way that I know of to get rid of that extra zero. Um, <clears throat> one of the functions here, radius diameter, you can switch. You know, here when you type in, let's say, two inches on your x-axis, that's and then you take a cut, uh, that's your actual, it's two inches in diameter. And as you cut down, it's reading the actual diameter. If you want to switch, you can change it to radius mode and just see how deep you're going. Um, <clears throat> you're able to do multi multiple datum points in that, but I don't really use it that way. The only useful thing that I haven't used yet, but I probably will, is it's got a taper measurement function. So with a drop indicator, you can actually measure uh, angle and length on a taper. And it's in the manual. So looking at the accuracy of the unit, if I go down here to the cross slide, and let's see if we can bring it in and I can do this. So I'm at zero and I got the readout set at zero. So here, if I set it to 10 on the cross slide, which is actually, you know, 20 thousandths in the diameter of the way this cross slide reads, and we go up here and you see it reads 20 thousandths. So here I have the z-axis set to zero, so let's go down to the travel dial, or not the travel dial, the carriage wheel. Uh, see if we can get rid of the glare. Here I've got quite a bit of backlash, so here I've got the tension just about on zero there. Um, so let's go over to 60. Now this should be a direct reading. Okay, and if we go up here, 59.8. And if something didn't read correctly or you installed that scale a little crooked, there is a section in the manual that you can electronically compensate. So you take some measurements and, uh, you know, you compare to what actually you're reading to what it's showing and you can adjust it. Now on the compound slide, I don't use anything uh, digital readout wise. I've never had to because with this, I'm usually doing some kind of angle or, you know, for threading. So I'm just reading off the wheel and that's been accurate enough. On the tailstock, I looked at many videos out there. A lot of people, there's a lot of different versions out there of this uh, that you can look at. This is what I settled on. I don't know if I really saw this one on uh, anywhere on YouTube. Uh, but what I wanted to, I've seen a lot of them that lie flat on this face or here. And it's kind of a little harder to read in both areas and a little more in the way. So I went with, you know, just up here on, an, you know, the 45. Um, so what I did, like most people, is I bought the scale. And I'll show you that at the end of the video, what I used and how much it was. And then I had to make uh, the piece in the front here to attach. And I had to make the aluminum piece here uh, to attach uh, the readout to it. Um, I did try this 3D printing out of plastic, and it works. And I actually mounted it, actually drilled and tapped it. Um, but you could use magnets underneath instead if you wanted to make this removable. So if you go all the way back, you'll see at some point here, there it is. It just kicked out the uh, drill chuck. And I can actually go further still. There's more travel, but at this point it's useless because it's kicking out my chuck. Um, let's just get it back in there. And we'll zero it. And let's go all the way out. And there, it bottomed out, and I still have scale left. I actually ended up cutting a little bit. It was actually longer here. And these scales, you can actually cut down if you want to. And I did. The only thing is that it caused some trouble with it was the sticker on here kind of bubbled. But that's not a problem. So you can see I can go about three inches of travel uh, on my tailstock. Like I said, what I went with is I actually drilled and tapped holes uh, in the tailstock housing. Uh, if you're not comfortable with that, you can either probably just double-sided tape or magnets would work really well. Uh, if you do decide to tap, drill and tap, the way I locate it, I have one hole here and then two holes on top there and there. What I used, you know, first I made the aluminum piece with the holes in it, 
and then I use just a transfer punch set. So if you're not familiar with these, you find the size hole that you want, and then, you know, without the screw in here, you go in here and, um, let's see if we can see this tip, you just give it a hit <clears throat> down into the material you're going into, and it gives you a nice center point to start your drill. Uh, now I did it on my mill, you know, you, I guess you could do it with a hand drill, but I'd really recommend if you have a milling machine to do that with. So this is the user manual or operation manual that came with it. And it's pretty good. I mean, it is written in Chinese English. Uh, so some of the things are kind of worded strangely, but you can definitely figure out everything and how it, you know, uh, the functions that you need to use. Like I said, I, I just use the basic functions and um, so I don't need any of these fancy radius functions and things like that. But I, I am planning on looking that a little bit again to see what, you know, some of these things maybe I can use. But pretty decent manual. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I bought this DRO from CDCO Machinery. And this is on their website. <coughs> um, and the price hasn't changed actually since I bought it. So they're going for about $469. Uh, it was around $500 with shipping to my area uh, for the 12 by 36 readout. And like I said, it's worked great, um, you know, for hobbyists. I'm not doing, uh, putting a lot of time on the, uh, the lathe, but enough, and I've never had problems with it. The readout for the tailstock I bought on Amazon. Uh, it's just a six inch digital readout. You can buy different versions. You can really buy them anywhere uh, you want. They're, you know, sold just about anywhere. So the one I bought is here, I'm showing you, paid around $24 uh, with shipping for it. So not expensive and so far so good. I've had it for a, I think a couple of years now since I've installed this one. The adapter for the tailstock DRO I actually had to make. I didn't find anything out there that would uh, just bolt on. So the first thing I had to do was build the ring to attach to the uh, MT2 end of the tailstock and that's just a simple ring and there's you know just a drawing to give you some of the basic dimensions and I had to make a little spacer block there to uh, space it to the right height and then once I had that piece made all I had to do was make the piece that would adapt the actual uh, 6 inch DRO to it so here I started out with a block, um, you know, that I drilled and counterbored the holes first. Then I milled out a uh, flat in it uh, to make it the little L shape there. And then once I had the L shape, I flipped it over and I milled that back part off of it, the triangle. And once I did that, I flipped it over and I milled the slot into it. Um, and then the final step is I drilled and tapped the two holes in the slot that actually would mount the uh, six inch digital readout to. All right, thanks for watching this video on my Grizzly G4003 lathe, uh, adding DROs to the main two axes and the tailstock. Uh, again, if you're interested in the Grizzly lathes or lathes, mills, things like that, Come back to the channel, I'll definitely have more content on the lathe itself, uh, different operations, hints, tips, tricks, things like that. Also on my mill, band saws, and other equipment that I have in the shop. So thanks for watching and see you soon.